Okay, I put down for this video why God will not listen to certain prayers. I was doing my studies with the Lord that I do, um, my Bible reading at night and in the mornings. It's always a good idea to start every morning with the Word of God and to end every day with the Word of God. I am a King James Bible believer, so we'll be using the King James Bible. It's God's perfect written Word. All the other versions after the King James Bible came out are Bible perversions that go back to the Vatican. You do the research, don't take man's word for it, don't take my word for it. Do the research, they go back to the Vatican. So if you want to turn to Psalm 6616, I came across this and I was like, I know what that means, Lord, I know what that means. And actually, to be honest with you, this wasn't my Bible reading. This is when I was singing to the Lord. I did a video where I play the piano a little bit, very poorly, and I try to sing psalms. This came across one of the psalms I was singing, and I'm like, something about that verse. And then I tried to pretend I knew what it meant, and I kind of had a somewhat meaning, but we'll get to it where sometimes words have meaning, and we need to be more of a, I'm going to look the word up, just to make sure I absolutely know what it means versus just going hey I, I think I know what it means that that's good enough it isn't okay Psalm 66 16 come and hear all ye that fear God and I will declare what he hath done for my soul 17 I cried unto him with my mouth and he was extolled with my tongue Okay, extolled, I looked it up, it means to praise. God was praised by his tongue, by his words. King David was giving God all the praise and glory. Number 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, this is the verse that I came across, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. 19, but verily God hath heard me, he hath attended to the voice of my prayer. In other words, King David wasn't holding iniquity in his heart. 20. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Right? So I got that, and it said, and it hit me, it said, you know, the Lord will not hear you? Well, why wouldn't the Lord hear you? Well, iniquity in your heart, you know, maybe you're holding something bad in your heart. At first, I was like, sin in your heart. Um, but... Uh, verse 18, I'll read it one more time. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So I decided, you know what, let's go in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary and let's look up iniquity. And there was four definitions, and I realized three and four are what apply okay, to what we're going to be talking about. Definition number three, a particular deviation from rectitude. Remember that word rectitude. Deviation means to turn from it. You're going the opposite direction. A sin or crime, wickedness, any act of just injustice, your iniquities have separated between you and your God, Isaiah 59.2. Okay. The iniquity that you hide in your heart separates you from God. You're hiding sin in your heart, wickedness, the act of injustice, um, and we'll get to that point. Uh, when it, we're talking about prayer, so many people are trying to take prayer out of salvation. And one of the things is, is how can God hear the prayers of a lost person? We'll get to that. Okay. And right there when it says rectitude, deviation for rectitude, um, iniquity in your heart, a sin or a crime, that's what a lot of the professing Christians that take repentance out and they take uh, prayer out, they want to keep uh, iniquity in their heart. They love their sin and they want to keep their sin. There's no changed life, and that's why. Uh, definition number four, original want of holiness or depravitude, depravity, okay? You're evil, you're wicked, you're on your way to hell, but you want holiness. You don't want this life. You know something's wrong, so what do you do? You lay your iniquity at the foot of the cross. And you say, God, I'm no good. I'm a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner. Lord, I am so, so sorry for sinning against you. Lord, save me. Have mercy on me. Uh, where are they? Definition four. 
Remember it said that the want of holiness, okay, or depravity, I'm not going to do that. Repentance, I'm not going to do that. Oh, repentance, it's works-based. It's works-based salvation. I'm not going to do that. Lost world, I'm not going to, I don't want to even believe in Jesus Christ. I want nothing to do with the true salvation. Nothing. I love my life the way it is. They're hiding iniquity in their heart. Then you have false Christians and false preachers and teachers that come along and they're saying that repentance isn't part of salvation. You don't have to lay your iniquity at the feet of the cross. Now, oh, sorry, don't. The phone's going off and I didn't turn it on silent mode. No bark. Um, now I almost lost my train of thought. But you, when I'm saying you lay your iniquities at the feet of the cross, it's saying that you're not being perfect. I'm not teaching sinless perfection. I'm saying you take it where you're hiding it in your heart. It says over here, if I regard iniquity in my heart, if I keep it in my heart, I ain't giving it up. You're supposed to take that iniquity and put it at the feet of the cross. I'm a sinner. You're throwing it at the feet of the cross. I'm a sinner, Lord. On my way to hell and I deserve to go to hell. Okay. Right now we're applying this to salvation. Now, someone who's getting saved... They're taking that iniquity out of their heart and they're throwing it at the feet of the cross. That's why they, God can hear their prayers. They're not saved yet. They're confessing. They, they repented. They believed. And now they're going into confessing both in prayer and calling upon the name of the Lord to save you. Well, if they're lost, how can God hear them? Right here. They threw their iniquity at the foot of the cross. It's no longer in here. God hears somebody that's broken and it's in a contrite state, their heart, regard iniquity in their heart, their heart is in a right place with the Lord. God looks at the heart when they're praying to Him and saying, this guy's ready for salvation, I'm saving him. Oh, you got that person over here, he doesn't want to repent, he doesn't even want to confess both his repentance and prayer, or belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, he doesn't even want to call on my name to save him, he doesn't even want to ask me to save him, He's his heart isn't right. He still has iniquity in his heart. I'm ignoring him. He's not ready. I'm not saving him. Okay? And that's what this is. It's easy believism. is keeping that iniquity in your heart. Now remember we talked about the definition. A particular deviation from rectitude. I read that and I'm like, I can be lazy and say I understand what rectitude is. Or we can look it up. So I looked it up. In morality, righteousness of principle or practice. They're deviating from this. Uh, uprightness of mind. Exact conformity to truth. Get a hold of that one. How often do we have what I believe, and I've done it before, where we deviate from truth. We give in to our flesh. We give in to our sin. We give in to the cares of this world. Uh, we're trying to fit in in groups we're not supposed to fit into. But more than anything, these false Christians and these Wolves in sheep's clothing, they deviate from rectitude, exact conformity to truth. They will not conform to, ab conform to absolute truth. They'll bring in other uh, sources cause to overthrow the Bible. They'll use terms that aren't found in the Bible to overthrow the Bible. Right? Or, to, rule, or the, to the rules prescribed for moral conduct, either by divine or human laws. Okay. Uh, one of my studies I did, I talked about how the laws of men, as long as they're a terror to evil, we're to obey them. When they become a terror to good, we obey the word. Now, you obey the word, period, it trumps everything, but if it's a terror to evil, it's not going to go against God's perfect written word. If it's a terror to good, that's because it's going against God's word. Okay. But that's rectitude. Okay, they're deviating it. Iniquity is when you deviate from rectitude. Okay, it's a sin. It's a or a crime, wickedness. So we see that in our iniquity that keeps God from hearing your prayers. When you hide it in your heart, God's not going to hear your prayers. Okay.
and yep, self-righteous uh, people do not want to give up their sin. That is why they have done away with repentance. And we talked about that. Uh, sorrow for sinning against God. No, nah, you're not supposed to have that. Okay. Um, now I'll keep saying it until over and over. You're to take the iniquity that's in your heart and you're to place it at the foot of the cross. Lord, I'm no good. I'm a sinner on my way to hell. That's repentance is not regarding iniquity in your heart, having sorrow in your heart for sinning against God. If you don't believe you sinned against God, then you're, A, you're not saved, but your belief, you're not really believing in Jesus Christ. It's up here, but it's not down here. And it'll never make it down here as long as you keep taking repentance out of salvation. Repentance happens here. Okay? Belief happens here, faith happens here. That's why the Bible says you're supposed to believe in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Uh, finished work of Jesus on the cross, and then it says you have to have faith in it. Okay, faith is here, belief is up here. Okay? Repentance is here. So your repentance takes faith, because this is where faith happens in your heart. It takes, repentance to fa uh, it takes faith to repent. It takes faith to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay. You're to believe it, and then you're to have faith in it. Okay, notice in verse 17 of Psalms. Oh, and then also, I was shapen in the iniquity of iniquity, in iniquity, Psalms 51.5, talking about how we're born into sin. We're all born with iniquity in our heart. Okay. We have a flesh that's sinful in nature. But in verse 17 of Psalm 66, David cried unto him with my mouth. And he was extolled with my tongue. Okay. He used his mouth. And people say, well, prayer is not part of salvation. you got to pray. Prayer is part of salvation. God, I'm throwing my iniquity at your, cross, at your feet. Lord, only you can save me. Only Jesus Christ can save me. Only the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. The payment, the debt that I owed, he paid. Okay, you're to extol with my tongue. And I did put the actual definition down here, up to 1828. Estolled, per, partic, I can't even pronounce that. Participle present tense. Okay. It means you're doing it right now when you say I extol. He's doing when David wrote this, he was extolling Jesus Christ, uh, God. Participle present tense, exalted in commendation, praised, magnified. Jesus Christ died for me. I didn't earn salvation. God is the one that saved me. I didn't earn salvation with my faith. Okay? It is not saved by faith through God's grace. Okay? I didn't earn heaven by my faith. God's the one that saved me. And I also like to point out there, uh, a lot of people will fight me on this. Uh, the He is God, but to be more correct, Jesus. Because He is a person, and Jesus is the only person of the Godhead. Uh, he is a pronoun of the third person. Okay. But David prayed, and he talked with the Lord. He said, I'm putting my iniquities at your feet, Lord. I'm talking about God. And it's, I'm not talking about that's exactly how salvation is today. As far as David believing in the cross, no. He laid his iniquities at God's feet. Okay? That way God would hear his prayers. And God would have, uh, what was it, verse 19, his mercy from me. He won't take his mercy from him. So God would have mercy on him. Kind of like someone who repents and says, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Why do people take out repentance and prayer when it comes to salvation? They do not want you to get saved. Reason number one. Bottom line, they do not want you to get saved. All these hirelings, these wolves in sheep's clothing, these servants of Satan, children of the devil, that are setting up there doing videos, that are setting in these Babel buildings, and they're setting there, and they preach easy believism, and now they're even taking prayer out of it, 
They took repentance out a while back. Now they're taking prayer out, and it's just you believe. You believe in your head, not your heart. Your head is where you believe, and you're automatically saved. Okay? They don't want you to get saved. Their father, the devil, doesn't want you to get saved. Uh, another reason is they want to be men pleasers. Remember, iniquity in your heart. You have professing Christians that aren't saved because they held iniquity in their heart. And when they confessed both in prayer or called upon the name of the Lord, God didn't hear them because they had iniquity in their heart. They kept their sin in their heart, their attitude towards sin. David, King David was not a perfect man. He had a perfect heart before the Lord, but he wasn't a perfect man. This isn't about perfection. This isn't about cleaning up your life and then getting saved. It's about taking your sin and putting it at the feet of the cross and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I'm not going to keep my sin and justify sin. And that's what it comes down to. I always and always and always will preach this. The sign of a false convert is someone who justifies sin. When you put that iniquity that was in your heart at the foot of the cross, your attitude towards sin changed. I'm not going to justify sin anymore. I'm going to start fighting it through the written word of God with the Holy Spirit in my heart. In other words, the changed life comes after salvation. But I don't want the sin in my life. All right? I'm not justifying it. I'm confessing it, saying, God, I'm a worthless sinner, and throwing that iniquity at the foot of the cross. You're not keeping it in your heart. Okay? But they're man-pleasers. People love their sin. They love their flesh. Um, the biggest thing now is telling people, what do you think? What do you feel? What's your opinion? And they're playing off people's flesh. I've had brothers and sisters in Christ talk to me. Well, my heart tells me this, and my heart tells me that. And it's like, I've told them, bottom line, if your feelings and opinions don't line up with this book, they don't mean anything to God, okay? other than you're in sin, other than you're ignoring truth. Okay? The Holy Spirit in you is going to say, hey, something's not quite right with this guy. Something's not quite right with this teaching. I can't put my finger on it, but something's not right. And you do the study later, and the Holy Spirit shows you truth. There's that. But I have a lot of people saying, well, I just, you know, I feel that this guy's website and videos, they're just great. I mean, just, and they have all kinds of justifications for saying it's great. And then you go and look at that website and you're like, this guy's lost. This guy's false. But what it is, is these people that don't want you to get saved, they're also, they're man pleasers. They're giving the people what they want. So they, in turn, can get what they want. Money, power, control. Okay. That's why. You give the people what they want, you can control them. And as they continue to fall apart and fall apart, they tend to rely on you. Uh, they want to keep their iniquities. I already talked about that. They want to keep their sin. They don't want to give up their sin. They want to say, I'm a Christian. I believe in my head. I'm a Christian. But I ain't giving up my sin. I'm going to try to justify sin all the time. Okay. Uh, do not be deceived. Repent and believe in Jesus Christ. The finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Um, confess both in prayer or call upon the name of the Lord to save you. Repentance. For godly sorrow work with repentance unto salvation. I mean, to. A sister in Christ corrected me. I keep saying unto because I wrote it wrong in my memory verses. To salvation. But basically, repentance, godly sorrow, comes before you get saved. It leads to salvation, God saving you. Okay. Uh, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, uh, on how he died, died and rose the third day. I'm still trying to memorize that one. But you go to those verses. The finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross is that he died on the cross, but he rose again th the third day later, three days later. But he died for your sins. Okay? And because he is God completely and fully, not a third of God, okay? not lowercase g God the Son, but God completely, he rose again the third day. He was perfect and paid the price for your sin. Okay? 
Call upon the name of the Lord to save you. Once those two things happen in your heart, you got a lot of false people out there, wolves in sheep's clothing, and I know a lot, this message is probably going to fall on a lot of deaf ears. This happens in your heart. It's not a physical act. It's not works. Okay? It gets turned into works when they say that's why you're, you do that to be saved. Okay? That's what you do. You've earned it by doing that. God didn't save you. You saved yourself by repentance. Then it becomes works. When they say you're saved by your faith, Faith gets turned into works. If they say you're saved by confessing both in prayer, that becomes works. You're not saved by that. God saves you. Repentance and belief in the finished work of Jesus on the cross, and it takes faith to do both, and the faith comes down here. In other words, it's not just head knowledge. It comes down to the heart. It happens in the heart. Then you confess both in prayer. The Bible says um, with the... Mal, or see, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, not to salvation, unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That one's actually unto salvation, leading to salvation. Meaning that repentance comes before God saves you. Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ comes before God saves you. Confessing both in prayer comes before God saves you. The first two happen in the heart, and then the heart speaks through your mouth. There's a lot of teachings on how, when Jesus was talking to him, that what goes in the mouth isn't what defiles man, that's what comes out of the mouth, because what comes out of the mouth comes from your heart. That's what defiles a man. That's why your heart confesses both that you're a sinner and that you're sorry for sinning against God, and you understand the consequences of sin. The debt that you owe. You're confessing from your heart the belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, I'm going to leave you with this story, Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 14, if you want to turn there. Some people might know this story. Matthew 14, verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, uh, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if thou bid me come unto thee on the water, if it be thou bid me to come, on, come unto thee on the water, but when he saw the wind, see, I, I skipped one, I'm sorry, 30, 29. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. I think that'd be cool. But when he saw the winds bolsterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He just believed in his head. Ah, Jesus will save me. I just believe in my head. That's all that matters. I just believe in my head. Oh, no, he didn't say that. It says, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. People that put their iniquity at the foot of the cross realize they are sinking. They're going down with the ship. They're going their way to hell. Peter didn't keep his mouth shut. Lord, save me. I can't... I just can't stand these people that preach that prayer is not part of salvation. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Jesus, God, is the one who saves. Jesus saved Paul here. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little face, wherefore did thou doubt? Okay? And I'm dressing this, if you're lost, you need to go to the salvation message, I'll link it. I had a brother in Christ who did a great video exposing somebody teaching a false gospel. And I'll link that as well. But one part that I skipped in this teaching that I want to throw at you real quick. Remember that story of Peter. Remember it, okay? But people who are saved, starting to sprinkle, 
People who are saved can have that same problem with iniquity in their heart. I've had brothers in Christ that they're like, everything's just falling apart, things aren't working, I've, I've read my Bible, I've prayed to the Lord, I've gone out and handed out gospel tracts. Bottom line, even as a saved sinner, if you hold iniquity in your heart, if you hold that sin in, when you commit sin and you try to justify it at first, and it takes you a while to repent it, that time period, God's not hearing you. He's not listening to you. You have sin in your heart, you're, you're keeping it in your heart, and God's like, the Holy Spirit's telling you, you need to repent. You need to repent. That's why I push so much that if you fall into sin, like you're tempted, your conscience can tell you don't do it, and you listen to your conscience. The Holy Spirit, the conscience can bear witness in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes along and says you're not supposed to do that. But when you fall into sin and you do it, and like I said, this might not even apply to saved, but I just want to bring into that concept of when you sin, you need to repent right away. Okay? You need to repent and forsake it. I always push, you need to repent, you need to fall on your knees and forsake it. If you hold that sin in, because I believe you can still be saved sometimes, and there are certain sins you struggle with, that sometimes you'll try to justify it. But you can see the person is struggling with it. Their life is miserable. They just feel like dirt. Okay. Confess that sin before God ASAP. So... Thank you for watching this. I hope this has encouraged the brethren to realize why God doesn't hear the lost world when they try to talk to them. Because they hide iniquity in their heart. Why can God, why will, why will God listen to somebody who's lost, but they're coming to the foot of the cross? Because they've taken that iniquity out of their heart and thrown it at the feet of the cross. Someone tries to attack the true gospel of Jesus Christ saying prayers of work, God won't listen to a, a lost person until they're saved. Yes, He will. But only if they come to the cross and take that iniquity out of their heart and throw it at the feet of the cross. I'm no good. I'm a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner. They do that in their heart and they throw it down at the cross. Then they believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And at that point, since it's happened in your heart, when they confess both to, in prayer and call upon the name of the Lord to save you, God hears them. And God looks at their heart, not the head. Oh, I believe, only believe. Not the head. God looks at the heart. And He says, you know what, I'm going to save that person. His heart is right. He did what he was supposed to according to Scripture. I'm going to save that person. Don't let them take and the true gospel from people. Continue, continue to stand, stand for the true gospel and preach the true, true gospel. Right. Repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.